Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through Quincy. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com slash Quincy. Or in the ear, nose and throat section of the Zero to Finals surgery book. So let's jump straight in. Quincy is the common name for a peritonsillar abscess. Peritonsillar abscess arises when there is a bacterial infection with trapped pus, which forms an abscess in the region of the tonsils. A peritonsillar abscess is a complication of untreated or partially treated tonsillitis, or inflammation of the tonsils, although it can arise without tonsillitis. Quincy can occur just as frequently in teenagers and adults as it does in children, which is unlike tonsillitis, which is much more common in children. Let's talk about the presentation. Patients present with similar symptoms to tonsillitis, with a sore throat, painful swallowing, a fever, neck pain, referred ear pain, and swollen tender lymph nodes. Additional symptoms that can indicate a peritonsillar abscess rather than just a simple tonsillitis include trismus, which refers to when a patient is unable to open their mouth, a change in their voice due to the pharyngeal swelling, which is described in textbooks as a hot potato voice, as though the patient is talking with a hot potato in their mouth, and swelling and erythema in the area beside the tonsils rather than on the tonsils themselves. Let's talk about the bacteria. Quincy is usually due to a bacterial infection and the most common organism is Streptococcus pyogenes, which is group A strep. It's also commonly caused by Staphylococcus aureus and Haemophilus influenzae. Finally, let's talk about management. Patients should be referred to the hospital under the ENT team's care. The pus that's trapped inside the peritonsillar abscess needs to be drained, as antibiotics alone are usually insufficient. There are two options. Aspiration of the pus using a needle or surgical incision and drainage. Quincy typically has an underlying bacterial cause, therefore antibiotics are appropriate before and after surgery. A broad-spectrum antibiotic, for example coamoxiclav, would be an appropriate choice to cover the common causes. However, local guidelines will guide the choice of antibiotic depending on the local bacterial resistance. Some ear, nose and throat surgeons will give systemic steroids, for example dexamethasone, in order to settle inflammation and help recovery, although this is not universal. If you like this video, consider joining the Zero to Finals Patreon account, where you get early access to these videos before they appear on YouTube. You also get access to my comprehensive course on how to learn medicine and do well in medical exams, digital flashcards for rapidly testing the key facts you need for medical exams, early access to the Zero to Finals podcast episodes, and question podcasts which you can use to test your knowledge on the go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.